This is the Dane Moore NBA podcast brought to you by Prize Picks. We're coming at you Sunday night. It's May 12th after the Wolves lose to Denver in game four, 115 to 107. Road team has won every game still in this series, and these two teams are headed back to Denver, tied up 2 2. I'm joined by Kyle Tagge. Uh, we just got back from Target Center, so this will be another one of our immediate reactions uh, to this game, talking about what themes stood out. And Kyle, if it's it's cool with you. I just kind of want to jump right into it. Uh, I think the key theme, obviously, of tonight, but thinking about it going back to both games, three and four, I think is Aaron Gordon and the way in which they used him. Gordon has been bringing the ball up the floor, uh, initiating the offense. We talked about that a little bit after, after game three. Really stood out again tonight, uh, which it just kind of messes up the Wolves' plan for how they want to guard Jokic, right, with Cat on him, Gobert kind of helping Gordon's initiating there. It kind of throws a wrench in it, and then it throws a whole nother wrench in it. If Aaron Gordon makes his first 10 shots uh, of the game, uh, he was 11 for 12 overall on the night, two of two from three, 27, seven, and six line for Gordon. Um, are, are you with me? And that's standing out as a as a, a major theme from games three and four. Um, and and if so, what, what about tonight in particular stood out? You know, it's perfect as we're doing this a lot, or we're doing this after the game, and I left early so after media post game stuff and i came on watch sports center and they showed the highlights of that game and you would think that the second best player tonight for the nuggets was jamal murray because he hits that half quarter and he has these couple really tough shots he had that one possession where Jaden guarded him for 24 seconds he still hit it mm -hmm. but aaron gordon was the second best player for the nuggets tonight and you could make a case that was maybe the most important nugget on the floor uh he was I don't watch all of Aaron Gordon's games in Denver, but that had to have been up there with the best game he's ever played. Uh, in also the context of the setting of it being down to one of the defending champs probably kind of supports that take, but he was 10 for 10 <laughs> yeah. before he missed a shot. Uh, and if you go look at his shot chart, it was all over the place. Like it was corner threes. It was, he hit like a one-legged mid-range fadeaway. He had some dunks. It was everywhere that he wanted to get to and score, he did. So it wasn't just like, hey, let's just leave him open in the corner. He got all these different little mm -hmm. actions and these tip backs and just, he was the absolute X factor in this game. He was, I think, our X factor when we talked about this series coming in. But uh, it was just incredible. And every time they played good defense or they did get, I mean, you got to give the Nuggets something. They gave it to Aaron Gordon and he did it in game three. And you're like, okay, well, 29% shooter from three all season. Like, I'll bet on that not happening again. Wrong. Happened again. Uh, he finishes with 27 points, seven rebounds, six assists, two blocks, a steal, and he went 11 for 12 from the field, including two for two from three. He was incredible, and he is, when they're cooking like that, man, I don't know if you could create a player in, the, in a lab who's better designed to play next to Jokic than Aaron Gordon. Yeah, it's... We're not hating on the general uh, plan of putting Gobert on Gordon and and Cat on Jokic. Um, that's something this group has had success with. But the plan they put up because they added to it here in yeah. this game too, which was um, they would still pick up Gordon full court, even though that was Gobert's man. So it was the weird thing, right? Of like. Nikhil's going to guard Gordon until he gets to like half court. So you can guard him full court. And then hopefully at some point within the half court, if they break, if Gordon breaks the press, you know, then Rudy's going to get back onto him. But it'd just be like, sometimes you'd be like, all right, Gordon's bringing it up the floor and Rudy's on KCP or Michael yeah. Porter Jr. or whatever. And, um, and I got, I mean, they, they wanted to, that was the Wolves adjustment in game four against mm -hmm. Gordon was, okay, we're going to do full court ball pressure, um, not with Rudy, but with somebody, with somebody else. And man, like that whole plan stinks when Aaron Gordon has a good game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, it, it's not, it's not that it was a bad idea, but it's a terrible plan. If you get great Aaron Gordon, it just enables him to kind of have a huge game in tandem with what you're already getting from Murray and Jokic, who those two both have looked great in, in games three and four too. So we're just, you know, at the point of like, 
do you adjust that right mm-hmm. is is it something that that needs to to change off of it do you let go of the rudy gobert in the spy role idea and match up more traditionally finch said after the game you're gonna have to probably guard him a little bit more traditionally you know not not be giving him as much i thought it was interesting though when we talked to gord or t- talked to gobert after the game yeah kind of kind of his thoughts on this so i'll play that clip what the, the defensive approach has worked so well for you guys against them um and then gordon comes and just makes a bunch of shots like how how do you kind of try to adjust to that or do you just stay with your game plan and say this is this is the best way to do this i mean uh, a lot of the shots that he made were contested yeah so you know if he, if gordon turns to uh Kobe Bryant and some stretches, we gotta be living with that. I mean, those shots were contested, uh, highly contested, even some of them. So, uh, this is part of the game, you know, and we know that they're a good team. We know that Murray, Jokic, Michael Porter, um, all these guys are gonna hit tough shots at some point. We just can't, can't give them the, the easy ones, and, and we can't give them the, you know, the easy fast break points. And, um, we can have mental mistakes, you know, especially when they're gonna hit tough, tough shots like that. I think it gives them confidence. So it that right, Kyle sounds kind of like they are going to run that back, right? Mm-hmm. And you 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 play that again, and you probably correctly bet on the idea that he's not going to shoot eleven of twelve from from the field again in another game. And I get that. I just, I, I don't know about you, and I need to go back and rewatch it and stuff, but just in the moment at the game, feeling it, it didn't feel, it felt like an adjustment was was necessary and maybe just going straight up to, back to guarding them straight up, right? With Jokic, with Gobert on Jokic and, and then Cat on, on down the line in that way. Maybe that's because, you know, Cat didn't have a good offensive game. We'll talk about that later, but you know, how does that kind of impact Carl's defense on Jokic and the whole, all of it? I don't know. I, I, I'm i curious to see if they change this up at all with, with the Aaron Gordon element of it, because it is kind of the basis of, of how they guard this Denver team. Um, but that has also been the premise of how they've played their best defense against this Denver team going back to the regular season last year in the playoffs and the, the season before. So it's a, it is something that needs to be solved six of those 11 makes for aaron gordon were dunks or okay. like one foot one i was gonna say ramps. like yeah d- were you when rudy said they were all contested i was like i don't well, that's the reason know. i just went and looked that up is because i yeah. again shout out to the four-time defensive player of the year but when he said that i was like well uh, right mm-hmm. he hit those two corner threes again he hit like a <clears throat> like a 16 foot. I think that was the one where he kind of spun one footed, but his shots were all over the place. I don't know if they were all contested. Cause again, six of those mm-hmm. 11 makes were dunks. And I can remember two of them that they might've been contested, but it was Mike Conley jumping up. Uh, so it doesn't count, but he, he's their X factor. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, these are two, and we're going to get into this later too, but these are two really good basketball teams and their X factor in the two biggest games of, you know, this this core's run, right? Like game three and game four, he has been incredible. And on the other side, Minnesota, whoever you think their X factor is, they just haven't showed up, right? Like Ant was the only good player tonight and we'll talk about him later. So I just, they're going to have to do something different against Aaron Gordon because also too, like watching him in warmups, he has so much confidence right now that I don't think Mm -hmm. it's, unfortunately like i don't think this is just he kind of is one of those guys right or you could kind of like and, and yeah. you know what's funny about him is that you forget i mean i forget but i was talking to someone from denver before like he was a dude in orlando and then he yeah. you bring him in and he has just been the perfect fit in the final you know chess piece for for this he initiated franchise. offense all the time in orlando yeah, he was yeah, like yeah. a guard or a wing yeah, he, you he know? was like, like uh when remember when andre guadal in philly was like by himself and then got <laughs> added to Golden State as kind of that like five tool comp. guy. Mm-hmm. That's what Aaron Gordon has been for Denver, uh, and he's incredible. And again, now after two games of this, and you only get you know possibly seven of a sample size, they're going to have to do something different. Like they mm-hmm. cannot, and we'll get into this too. Well, you got to take away that something else needs to be taken away. Like if Aaron Gordon's going to give you twenty seven, then hopefully it's because you're doing something that 
is taking away Jamal Murray or Nikola Jokic or forcing them into difficult shots. And like Murray and Jokic did their thing too. Now they made a ton of mid range shots, which that would kind of goes would typically goes into like Aaron Gordon, like, Oh, variants, you know, they made them, but it is Jamal Murray and it is Nicole Jokic who are just, he, I mean, Jokic is lethal from that Florida range and Jamal is a great pull up two guy. They shot Denver shot 19 of 30 from mid range in this game. Mm. And that does include like the floaters. Yeah. Cause Jokic kind of takes them from like nine feet or whatever, but uh, 19 to 30. Yeah. Like you can't have that. And Gordon. We talked about this after game three, but Aaron Gordon shot 29% from three on the season. I think he shot 26% from three against the Lakers. He's shooting 66% from three in this series. That's eight for 12. At some point, I mean, he's getting four or five of them up a game. It just, I know we're kind of talking about different things, but also the same thing of finding different ways to shut off his water. But for now, going into game five, like I wouldn't, I can no longer say like, if Aaron Gordon beats us, I'll take Mm -hmm. that L because he's beating them. Right. And it's kind of doing it, not single-handedly, because, again, Jokic was the best, despite right. what Ant did. He was the best player on the court tonight. But that is about as good of a second banana, as good of a, whatever, Pippin to your Jordan that they that Denver could have. And he absolutely killed them tonight in all aspects of the game. I mean, just even his defense. He had four fouls. But he's physical. He can protect the rim. He can do everything. Like you said, he can initiate the offense. He can bring it up. Uh, he was the man of the match for Denver. Mm-hmm. Let's uh let's move over to Cat. Um, we'll get uh, we'll get all the, the bad things out of the way uh, here <laughs> at the beginning. Uh, obviously it's a it's a brutal game uh, for Cat. Yeah. Major disparity in the power forward play in this game, given uh, what what Gordon did there. Um, I I have down that Cat was one of ten from the field in the first half with three points. Uh, he did hit a three early in the third quarter. I had a couple other get into the basket things early in the third quarter. Uh, what did he end with 13 points in the game? But you, you were kind of hoping it was going to be like the Phoenix game, right? Mm-hmm. Where those bursts. Yeah. And, and there's been a lot of bursts throughout the playoffs of that early third quarter. There hasn't been a lot of sustained offense from, from Carl in a full game in, in the playoffs. But this was the opposite. This was this was the other end of the spectrum, and and it was it was costly. What uh, what element of it not working stood out to you more? The way he was being used, or kind of the way that his emotions seemed to impact his game as as it went on. I think it's the way he was being used. I agree, because I also kind of have a bigger take about just the coaching in games three and four on a multitude of levels whether it be finch behind the scenes or mike Nori, mike Nori in front of the scenes but i just didn't like the way he was used and then because it was five for 18 it led then to what was the, mm-hmm. the other part of the question like the emotional part of it um but yeah i just you know i thought he rebounded well he did have 12 rebounds and he wasn't really in foul trouble but he just never had any sort of rhythm offensively at any point they didn't get him really good look looking threes he caught the ball at least three times my memory where just he caught it he did that thing where the ball just stops and he kind of examines what's going on in the court and against denver which is a bunch of phds in the game of basketball like you can't do that so i don't know i don't i don't i don't think carl was my x factor coming in this i think Nas was but on a night like tonight where you have two super duper stars face of the league type guys and Jokic and Ant going battle, you know, battling it out and both just going crazy. Jokic had Aaron Gordon to run with him. And then obviously Jamal Murray, but Ant had no one. And that those are the moments where in Phoenix, when Ant was running and sprinting, like he had Carl in those bursts, yep. every, almost every game against the Suns, Carl had at least one good chunk of time that gave him a burst. And then as Finch has always said, that's when Ant would take off. And Mm -hmm. Ant was on an island tonight because Carl just, they could not find any sort of, I mean, I don't know, like, this is not, do you tweet this? Like, this is not a serious, I don't don't like the post-ups. Like, I just don't like them posting him up with Aaron Gordon on him because I don't think that's like a mismatch. I think Aaron Gordon is tough as nails. When you said, like, it didn't feel like he got any rhythm, it and he didn't, but it looked like they were trying to get it through the post in in the first half. And it's like, we know what they do against Carl in the post. If it's if it's not Gordon on him, 
it's going to be you know a, a small on them and they're going to bring the double right the mm -hmm. thing we've seen for for a long time carl's got better at at passing out of those that doesn't get him in a rhythm though right double ah yeah. pass you know like <laughs> yeah. that's that's it's not getting him in a rhythm or if it's not a small on him it's gordon one-on-one -on -one, and gordon one-on-one -on -one is tough for cat so mm -hmm. i i felt there was too much of that there and and that's because they're searching for a rhythm or they're searching for more cat offense. So if he doesn't kind of get like the catch and shoot three game going at the beginning, because the catch and shoot three game gets the plane off the catch, driving to the basket game going like, if that doesn't happen first, we've seen this throughout the playoffs, saw the Phoenix series too. Then they try to get it to him in the post and the post it's just, it's doubles in, in, in Phoenix or it's guys that he can't consistently score on one-on-one -on -one because he's not being guarded by centers like he used to be able to just back down and mm -hmm. finesse hook shot over like i don't know there there needs to be there needs to be ways to to get carl going and i just don't like when the path turns into being post-ups there that i would just in that situation okay even if carl does if he misses his first four threes right like that's going to happen or whatever still use him as a spacer and i think you're still going to find him within the flow there where he will just randomly find a situation to to play off the catch i think i think the post-ups lost the spacing of the offense and and then because he didn't have a rhythm he didn't that did that didn't help right the, the spacing yeah. of of the the overall offensive product so a lot of this as was the case in the phoenix series is about cat being able to go in tandem with ant which is tough because it is going to have to be in the bursts time right yeah. like because ant is the usage guy now he is the luca usage so it's a it's a difficult and it's a new sort of spot for cat but um i didn't like the way they got it to him and i didn't like the way he handled himself with within within those within those times and what what sorry we should say what his final his final line was was it five for he was five, five for, for 18 uh, five from for the field, for one for four points. from three. Was, yeah, so four of 14 from two is but brutal. Including he was three for 10 in the paint. Yeah. which You know what I mean? So, like, that just sums up that first segment, right? Like, yeah. I don't like the post-ups in general. And then when he got the post-ups and he tried to turn, you know, left shoulder, right hook, he mm -hmm. wasn't making him. I mean, he got blocked by KCP on one possession. So that whole burst or you know strategy or the second banana or whatever that the wolves tried to implement i mean there's no better way to start this pod after that game than saying the second you know best player for the nuggets was awesome and the second best player for the wolves tonight was just kind of non-existent so i do think i just I think it's just worth mentioning because it was a really being in the locker room i thought it was a really good response just in general to the whole thing um as we kind of follow these players and their storylines and their growth uh Dave McMenamin asked Carl about going five for 18. And Carl said, quote, things weren't falling today. I take responsibility for that. I know I put the work in, so I feel good about the work I put in. It's shown in the playoffs, obviously. It's unfortunate that on Mother's Day I have a shooting performance like that, but it's the way the game goes. It's not fun. It's not a fun game sometimes, but it definitely has some great rewards. So I'm excited to go back out there in two days and find ourselves hopefully on the right side. To me, I just think being there and seeing a match that it wasn't an excuse i think it was just kind of like hey this is me being authentic and i was terrible tonight it's a tough day for me and uh let's see if he bounces back because they have no chance against this team if carl's not giving them those right. bursts and that's what that's where they pummeled phoenix in four is because ant was the best player on the court we said that but then they got those bursts from carl and without those bursts tonight man ant was on an island Today's show is brought to you by uh, Adriana Lanik at Coldwell Banker Realty. And we just we want to put Adriana and her website, thedancingrealtor.com, on your radar. If you are in that stage in life where you are ready to buy that first home, or you're ready to buy maybe a second home, a rental home, an investment home, whatever that might be, um, to do these things, you need to be working with someone who knows what they're doing, particularly if it's your if it's your first time. Um, purchasing experience. Sometimes it's just hard to know where to even begin. And the reality of the situation is it starts with someone like Adriana. And again, you can go to the dancingrealtor.com or call 715-304-9920 to book a consultation. Um, that That's how you start the process. She knows how to get this thing rolling. So if you just even have it um, on your mind that 
hey, I we are looking to to purchase a home. Consider Adriana Lonick. Again, she works with Coldwell Banker Realty here um, in Minnesota and Wisconsin. And if you are considering the next steps in home ownership, don't you do know where to go? And that is the dancingrealtor.com. Um, or if you're ready to contact Adriana directly, you can do so by calling or texting her at 715 304 9920. Get the ball rolling on home ownership at the dancingrealtor.com. Uh, today's show is also uh, brought to you by Prize Picks. The one we really liked, Kyle, was Ant bouncing back in a big way, more or less than 27 and a half points. Uh, like like that one a lot. I think his his rebounds and assists total was five and a half, and I think he had five uh, for for the both of those. Again, like I always say, you know, the, these are the these are the times where you kind of get a feel for the series. Who, how is this working? Where is this going? I know Rudy Gobert's number has been like 12 and a half or 13 and a half. We're mm-hmm. going to talk about him a little bit later. I think he has six, 12, 23 total points uh, in, in this series thus far. So go in on some of those themes and uh, and think about how this team is going to react and put together a daily fantasy lineup at prizepicks.com or on the Price Picks app. And you can use the promo code Dane for a $100 sign-up bonus. Uh, Kyle, what I want to get into next is where this game turned. Pretty obvious, uh, that end of the... the <laughs> Do we the, have to? <laughs> the end of the second quarter. Yeah, I actually would have, wish I would have been sitting by you to see how nope. how that impacted you. Nope, that you. was about as... Uh, <laughs> real talk. That was about as sad as I have ever been as a sports fan because... Not because you knew the game was over by any means. I You thought Minnesota would have a run in them, but the context of it being Denver... Mm-hmm. And then also just, I don't know if you've ever like visually seen a multi-car pileup, but like just it all happens so fast, and you're like, yeah. oh my god! Like, Ant steps into this three to make it seven, and the crowd. And the, I will say this again because we talked about after game three, the crowd tonight was just better and awesome. Like I thought the crowd was really good tonight, despite what was loud. happening in front of them. It was loud. At there were multiple times where I just I couldn't hear Jack sitting next to me. But so Ant hits that three to make it a seven point game. The Nuggets come down, and with at the 22nd mark, KCP hits a three, and then all of a sudden they score five more points in 20 seconds or less than 20 seconds, despite the fact that Minnesota had the possession and no shot clock. It's and crazy. it went from a seven point deficit, ideally at halftime, to a 15 point deficit. And that wasn't the ball game because I just don't really believe in that, even though they gave up this 8-0 run and they lost by eight. But that was about as much of a sports backbreaker as you can experience. Rudy thought it was the game. <laughs> against the team is so tight. How hard is that last 20 seconds of that first half? Taking the I think that's the game. I mean, that's uh, instead of coming to the locker room down 8-0-9, you come down 16 or 15. So um, those kind of stretches we can have against a team like like them, you know, and uh, we're going to watch film, we're going to, uh, yeah, we group, you know, it's uh, it's 2-2 at the end of the day, so, uh, you know, we're, right, we, we, we're in the right place, you know, we just got to keep learning and uh, yeah, come back better. Remember how after game three we talked about it, it feels like the team that has more mental mistakes is going to be the one who loses every game, mm-hmm. game two, mm-hmm. or kind of loses that emotional control or focus or whatever. Obviously, Denver did in a major way in game two. Malone going on the court, um, Murray throwing his locker onto the floor, uh, and then game three and game four, um, Denver won that, and 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 the Wolves have seemed like the team that. Has has had more of those. I mean, how many times did Rudy say mental mistakes in mm-hmm. in the locker room after the game? Um, you can't have that. You can't have that particularly uh, against against Denver, and it's going to be it's going to be interesting to to see how what what that looks like from the emotional control element of it. But I, mm-hmm. I just thought that end of the first half was was emblematic of of that kind of coming to fruition in this game. Question. And I know that this is a hot button topic, but uh, I I didn't watch that game thinking anything about officiating. Did you? Um, like in terms of like, well, I, there I, was there was. It's, I, I mean, when you say that, the right before the end of the first half, there was that 
the, that whole sequence happened, what made it from 16 or from eight to 16, there was that like really phantom call Re on, on Gobert. Gobert when, yeah. when, so Jokic cuts to the rim and it looks like, right. Was that, like, was that, it was am I right? Possession, it was the possession before Jokic kicks it to KCP for three. So okay. I say big picture, Tell like I, I wasn't doing the whole, like, I don't know, man. I, I knew <laughs> I woke up on mother's day and my mom texted me that Scott Foster was the ref. And I just think that whole thing is like kind of bad. Like we shouldn't be doing this, but in that, in that moment, there were just these little segments, like big pictures of wolves didn't lose. Cause the officiating Whereas like game three, you could be like, that was just a completely different type of whistle. And we've talked about mm -hmm. that, but there's just these little moments. And I, I would chalk it up to more about the composure and stuff, but it was a terrible call. It was like Jokic cuts to the rim and, Gobert like isn't their 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 hands are on each other the whole time because that's just how this matchup goes. But it was a weird phantom call. And then the weirder thing was if you go back and watch replays, like the possession before that, Jokic had a real big heart to heart with Scott Foster. So like he's clearly telling him something about like watch his hands, and then he calls it, and then it just leads to an extra possession. And that's like the bigger picture to me is that you just can't give this team extra possessions. You can't show them yeah. that you're you know bleeding or you can't show them that you're shook uh because in that moment they get an extra possession Jokic finds kcp in a spot where i don't really know why anyone's trying to double in that i mean i know why because it's Jokic, but rudy was adamant all game like try not like don't double like don't leave your other guy because he's gonna find them like let me do this and then for ant to come down right it's 10 kcp hits the three ant comes down you and i were watching this post game he goes with nine seconds left like again, so like at the end of the second the quarter, the, yeah. yeah, at the end of the second quarter, like he no shot clock, final possession. He goes with nine seconds and he tries to split that double team with a mm -hmm. crossover. That's just what did you say? Like, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. And then, then they come down to get a dunk, and then Nikhil, who was also now like discombobulated and lost his composure, throws this touchdown pass to a Jaden McDaniel's that just. I don't know if you ever watch a lot of made baskets, man, but usually Jaden is not looking for the ball after that <laughs> happened again <laughs> in the second half. Like Ant yeah. was open, but again, that and just snowballed into whatever a star player in Jokic did with the official. I mean, players talk to the official all the time and like tell him like, Hey, look for this. It just snowballed into, was that the game? I don't know. I don't think so, but in Rudy's defense, like he's out there, but it was just an absolute backbreaker because when it got to seven, that was the loudest the place had been all night. And you just can't you can't have those snowball effects against the defending champs. I don't I don't think this was I don't think that was necessarily the game. There was just a bunch of these these factors. There's the Gordon thing we talked about. It's Cat having his worst shooting performance in in forever. There's that sequence at the end of the first half. And then I, the non Jokic minutes and the benches. Mm -hmm. was was a huge factor to me in this and those are kind of different things too because i mean we could look at kyle anderson's plus minus of minus 14 in six minutes that was more than just the Jokic minutes right or or nikhil what was nikhil he was minus 20 and he played 24 minutes that wasn't just the non-yokich minutes but i thought the non-yokich minutes at the start of the second quarter again which you know was going to come is always the way he plays the whole first quarter it's just like ant right and he sits out for the first three four minutes of the second quarter for them to lose those three minutes at the beginning of the second quarter, 13 to four is completely unacceptable, completely a pattern with the wolves against Denver. And, and just I, particularly that second quarter stretch there. I thought it was ridiculous. I, I Nas Reed, Kyle Anderson, Jaden McDaniels, Nikhil Alexander Walker, and Mike Conley on the floor. When you know you have a three or four minute opportunity to make up some points like why did that happen I, I i don't understand that it was not a it was not a foul trouble thing i guess go bear you want to match him up with the Jokic minute so that's why he's not out there is it because carl is was stray voltaging in the first quarter like what happened so nas reed kyle anderson Jaden mcdaniels Nikhil alexander walker and mike conley are the guys on the floor there like that's you're 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 hoping to push that that Somehow they have a worse lineup out there to start the quarter because Denver's going with Gordon Porter Jr. and Murray out there. I thought that was, I thought that that was ridiculous. And then, and then they, you know, and then the third quarter, Jokic gets in foul trouble. With six minutes left in the quarter, he sits out the whole final six minutes of the third quarter. 
and the Wolves have their starters out there, right? Because it's the middle of the third quarter, and they start getting on a little roll there. And then all of a sudden, the same thing happens. It's Kyle Anderson comes back out there, and Nas, and Nikhil. And I'm like, I get that those guys have to play. Clearly, Ant can't play 45 minutes, right? Or 48, you know? That that just is not... Or this... But, man, I just think if it were me, I would be tailoring my it would be like i am hammering this button button whenever Jokic is off the floor i'm putting an offensive group out there probably anthony edwards letting go of his rotation some to just be like we are winning this three minute stretch when Jokic is off the floor or if it's some by a gift of foul trouble that Jokic is off the floor for six minutes we are not losing that and this team consistently loses the non-Jokic minutes they win the Jokic minutes a lot of the time which is a separate topic and a credit to the wolves, but this is nuts, man. This is that's nuts to me. I'm putting 17 to 22 in the nine Jokic minutes, tons, ton points, ton of time. They lost 17 to 22. That's and actually, that's that's the stat, right? Yeah, they were outscored by five in the non Jokic minutes, and then you put a little fucking uh cupcake on top or whatever of the Jamal Murray three, and that's how you lose by eight. Yeah, it's not that eight will run at the end of the second half, it's it's that. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but. That lineup in my notes, Nikhil, Mike Conley, Jaden, Nas, and Kyle. Someone on that was sitting next to you said that that line, that five man never played together in the regular season. Do you think, I just, again, I'm not, you don't have it up in front of you, but if, if that's true, again, we were sitting in different media sections, but if that's true, like you just said, that's embarrassing. Like that's, you can't have that. And I don't know, like, there's there's a coaching thing for me that I noticed after game three that was hammered home to me tonight in game four, not only by my eyes, but other people, uh, that for those first two games, Chris Finch sat at like the 40-yard line of the court in, in Denver, Denver, and now in Minnesota, he's sitting more of like the 20-yard line, like he's back further. So when Mike Inori, who's doing as best as he can, is like patrolling the sidelines and he's at half court, he can't hear Finch as much. That's not the be-all, end-all why they lost, but that comp- – comped with the fact of this team has been like we have an identity and these are the guys that got here after tonight i would push back a little bit on what you said just just for fun uh i don't think they all have to play i don't think kyle anderson can play anymore in the series like i don't i don't know if that's a hot take like I oh wait, just... wait 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 you just, i'm saying they all have to play no you're like i understand that those oh. guys need to play oh i said that okay yeah, 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 I, I, get what like, I don't think kyle anderson can play anymore in the series i think next series it could be if they play dallas and they do advance knock on wood could be a great kyle anderson series i called kyle anderson the best luka Doncic defender in the league four months ago because they're both slow like it's perfect they both just go at each other that lineup has not played any minutes ah look at me okay so but then, then let's really so cook. That's even you, worse. You played a five-man lineup in the non-Jokic minutes that you've never tried before. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You can't, you can't do that. So again, it's not like again they didn't lose because of the half quarter. I don't think they lost because of Kyle Anderson. But man, you play six minutes and you're a minus eighteen. Mm-hmm. This is not a series for him because offensively, yep. Denver knows again their PhDs. They know how to defend that whatever he's going to give you. He hasn't had any touch around the rim with those little, like he was trying to get a shot or two off against Jamal Murray or KCP. It doesn't work. But your bigger picture thing is is spot on. Like you now have to, when they I just this, I just want to attack those minutes right. from the Wolves. But, you right. know, there was like this energy with the Gobert trade and stuff a couple of years ago that they, like, they want to make other teams react to them. And that's cool. And that's got them the furthest they've been in 20 years. But against this team and against this guy on the other end, the three-time MVP, you have to, I thought you said something really smart, like you got to blow up your rotations and how you come into this. When he sits, like Antis has to come out, like um, be on the court or or worst case, you know, like Carl or something. You have to have offensive weapons to not have Ant or Carl. I, I just, I don't know. I, I, and I, and I'm saying this, like, I don't know like how disorienting this would be. Ant normally plays the entire first quarter, right? What would happen if Ant just, played the first nine minutes, sat the final three minutes of the first quarter, and then came in to start the second quarter when you know, like, and is that that discombobulating? I, I don't know. And, and this isn't just the first quarter. Like, the same thing happens in the, you know, in the in the second half where yeah, it plays the whole third quarter, 
and then sits for the beginning of the fourth. You know, that's the, the the normal rotation pattern, as is Jokic's. I don't know. I just I, I, I don't think you need to mirror that. But again, that's what I'm saying is I don't maybe I don't know if that is extremely dysregulating or whatever to, to ant is, and them. Is this stupid? Like the other thing you said was and can't play all 48. Probably not. Like this isn't Josh Hart stuff, what they're doing with the Knicks. Well, I, but, I say that because but, did you but, I mean Ant's defense tonight was brutal. I mean his offense was awesome. For sure, for it sure. Was but just brutal. This to me, the way we've done post game pods for these first eight games, this is uncharted territory, but in like the most fun way ever. Because in Phoenix everything was gravy and just kept winning and that was awesome. Mm-hmm. And you celebrate. And then you win those first two in Denver and now you get punched them off. Like to me now it's a best of three series and I throw out a lot of things. Like I, I would be okay. Can I, can I, can I play the Rudy on the non Jokic minutes? Yeah, but, for sure. I want to hear what he thought. They won the minutes when Jokic was was off the floor tonight. That, that's happened at, at times throughout the season when you guys have played them. What is that? Why does that look different? And what do you need to do? With this? I think that was a stretch that already hurt us. I don't know. If, I think it was in the second quarter. Uh, once again, man, we gotta execute the game plan. Uh, we're gonna watch film and see all the things we can do better. But um, you know, those, those guys did play good. I mean, we gotta give them credit too. I mean, uh, Holiday, him, I don't know, three four, three four threes. Bron had a great game. They weren't very efficient tonight. Uh, so I think we're gonna watch the film and see what we can do to try to make it part of it. I, I think I, the, the reason I wanted to play that is I think it's important to bring up that Denver's bench played well. Yeah. Like those guys sure. did play well in those moments and just in general for, for the night, like where, where do we have here? We have six of nine from three from the combination of Reggie Jackson, Justin holiday and, and Christian Brown. And, and again, like I know some of the reaction to Aaron Gordon and, and a lot of this is fair too. It's like, okay, he's not going to make 11 of those in a row, like er, 10, 10 or 11 shots in a row. And it's unlikely that Reggie Jackson, Christian Brown and who am I missing? Justin holiday are, are going to combine to shoot six of nine from three, but and, and disagree with me if you do here, but I thought they played well. Like I would have still said those guys, their bench played well tonight, even if that would have been a three for nine from three oh, for, for sure. those, for no, those that's- guys. And and I thought Rudy had a good point on that, and that got me thinking about that. I was like, oh yeah, like like Justin Holiday has been kind of really helpful. I feel like this whole series, when did we even know he was going to be in the rotation? We were like, Peyton Watson, Jade McDaniel's two point oh. Well, no, he doesn't play. Like they're playing Justin Holiday for those shooting reasons. Uh, I mean, he is a forty percent three point shooter. I just I, I I wanted to say that I think it wasn't just the non Jokic element of it. It was those bench guys playing well, but to go to the punch thing, like if you have a more potent offensive lineup out there than Nas Reed, Kyle Anderson, Jade McDaniels, Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander Walker, I'm not sure that bench group gets going. You know, if it's, if you just get ant going, 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 or cat going, going, going right there, like don't, don't, give the non Jokic minutes a chance to breathe. Don't give the bench a chance to catch a rhythm. And I thought, I thought that was bad. Justin holiday is 10 for 16 from three Sheesh. in this series. 62%. Uh, I want to close with what I said, but sorry, I, I cut fact, you off. No, no, I, it factors I, in the bench thing because I thought you said some things that were really smart. But to me, when I look forward now to a best of three series, not everyone does have to play. Like it doesn't have like, if there's like, Nikhil still probably gets a chance because of at least he has shown an ability to spread to spread the floor. I mean, it was 24 hours ago where we're like, hey, Nikhil hits every big shot that he ever takes tonight. Whether it was the shoulder thing, he wasn't even on the injury report. He just, I mean, he like over airballed a three pointer from the corner. That's just not what he does. But so I don't think the rotation needs to be, you know, everyone earned a spot for game five. And then on the ant thing, yeah, he can't play 48 minutes, and you're right. If he's gassed, he usually takes off plays on defense or he doesn't make enough movements on offense, but he probably has to play 45 minutes the rest of this series. Like, I mean, that just, I mean, I, what, yeah, what are, yeah, what are yeah. the other so, counters to that? No, 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 no. Three I, minutes I, rest Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. I, I guess I'm just, what I'm thinking of it as is, do you just go with seven guys, right? The starters. Sure. And then, okay. Same page. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, 
so that's taking out Kyle Anderson. My 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 question to you is: Do you just only play Nas and Nikhil off the bench, or do you try to, as is your opinion, to not play Kyle Anderson at all? Do you replace him with a Monte Morris? Or I had I would... a I even had T.J. Warren thoughts at at some point <laughs> during this game. Yeah, I did. We offense because are... I think they need offense. No, I know. Or you know, I would I know he missed two threes, but I would even give Jordan McLaughlin another chance if we're trying to find an eighth guy just to. Because you know when J Mac is out there, the ball is going to move a little bit, and he's going to find a random poke steal or something. But mm-hmm. this isn't a pile on Kyle Anderson, who had a really, again, his tenure in Minnesota will be looked at. It. He was an awesome filler in last year when he got to kind of play the four next to Rudy. He spoke French before anyone else knew the language, <laughs> and then this year before the trade deadline, he struggled. Post trade deadline, he was back to being an awesome self. But that's also like, even if Kyle Anderson was my brother, at some point the playoffs are about just. You start to whittle down your rotation because after a couple of games, you get exposed, and he's been exposed. There's nothing. Well, he's been exposed all season when he plays has to play the wing. Yeah. Right? And and he, what was his best game of this series? When Rudy didn't play. Exactly. So he played. But unless Rudy's basically. had another baby, man, like, <laughs> if anything, and I don't know if this segues into the non-Jokic minutes or – because this one I don't know about if I would play Jokic or Rudy when he's out there without Jokic, but – I, I I leave these games thinking that there's more meat on the bone to just get Rudy the ball. And I know that that's probably going to fly in the face of what some people think because there was some fourth quarter turnovers tonight and some uh, I'm with that weird offensive foul stuff. But I mean, you and Rudy even talked about it after the mic's cut out that when he like has that roll to the rim, he's open. It's just mm-hmm. really difficult because, again, I said that 350 pound grizzly bear is moving his arms. But there's ways to get the bigs that are setting these screens up high and then rolling to the basket, the ball in good spots that either finish at the rim or then kick it out for a three. But I thought there's just more stuff there that they could do with Rudy because they need to find more offense. Yeah. So, so what I I think with that, and some people are maybe being like Dane and Kyle, like, wait, what? We want you know more middle of the floor Rudy touches. (laughs) I what what's standing out to me is Rudy Gobert is being ignored on the roll. And yeah, what normally it. happened, what happened all season with Rudy Gobert on the roll? Two. They would send two to him. They would have the guy coming in for a tag and the low man coming over. Like, so now it is totally changing, like, the fabric of the Wolves offense because that Rudy on the roll normally forces rotation, right? Mm-hmm. So now against that forced rotation, you're like, Okay, who came in to help in on Rudy? Let's pass it to that guy's side. Here's Ant now attacking off the second side. Um, or or Carl's over there from the corner. Or Jaden, you know, attack. Like, we could picture that, like, so many of the best. Actually, so many of the highlight plays of the season. If you watch them back closely, you know what normally happens in them? Is it's Rudy on the roll, gets too much attention, and now it's just, like, freeway to ant dunk or something else crazy there so i'd say that like i don't know if just going to rudy on the roll a lot because he would need to like make some short roll passes or hit a floater Which or he's whatever done though, right like he did a little dream on green stuff this year more than he's yep. ever done but and again yes. that's my th- it's not just all about you and i trying to be hey dump it down to the old big seven three no, foot french no. guy <laughs> it's not that never Never. When Carl entered it to him in the post, direct post up, when it was just one-on-one Gobert on Jokic, it's, it's like, no, do not do that. <laughs> but, like, there are these other times where it's it, it just it just is there. It's, it's there, Rudy on the roll, and it's kind of because they're playing Jokic up at the level, right? And, and there's just nothing really back there, and the Wolves don't love getting the ball to Rudy – like 12 feet from the basket. They want to get it to him two feet from the basket, lob dunk. Um, But Denver is giving that to them. And I think if you are the wolves, you need to, you need to capitalize on that a little bit. Rudy was, Rudy was asked about this uh, at the end of the game. I think I got this here. Yeah. Rudy with Jokic playing at the level of the screen, a lot of your roles, you've gotten really deep in the paint and you've been picked up by smalls a lot of the time. Do you feel like you're getting thrown well enough in those situations? I think we got to work on that. You know, keep working on it. I, I think it's hard sometimes for guards to, to see me because they, they're big, you know, they, they, they have a lot of length. And uh, 
you know, I, I truly believe that we're getting better at it, but we gotta find ways, obviously, to um, to get get me or the whoever rolling big, you know, uh, rolling to the basket. I think they, that's one of their weaknesses, you know, and they usually they, end, they ends up being the foul and, and then we get the bonus and you know it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. And I think we're also capable to make the kickouts, you know, as bigs, make the right play. So um, we gotta keep, yeah, keep. We, we, we work on it every day, you know, uh, and we're going to keep working on it. So that that's that's the interesting part of it is they don't see this coverage that much, which when we say at the level, or we refer to it as high yeah. wall when the, the Wolves have done it, that's Jokic basically getting out to the level of the screen to try to basically get the ball out of Ant's hands. And we've all seen Jokic is kicking his legs around. He's just basically doing jumping jacks there. And I'm glad Rudy actually brought that up is like, you know, it, it, I think it probably is hard for Ant or Mike or whoever to, to see him there, but it's there. So, you know, avoid the Jokic jumping Jack. Like it's, you know, it's kind of like the, wouldn't be like putt putt, you know, and then the thing <laughs> yeah. is like swinging, yeah. you know, like you just got to time it. Right. Um, and, and I, I, I leave games three and four being like the wolves need more offense. Yep. And, and I think that's pretty undeniable. And we are at this point where you are getting again, 44 from ant tonight. We should talk about that. Um, <laughs> but like, where else is it coming from? Where else is it coming from? Particularly if they're ignoring Rudy and on the roll and they're not guarding Jaden in, in the corners there. Okay. Then it kind of needs to be, it needs to be cat if cat, Cat's offense is just hit or miss, you know, and per, I think particularly in this role and in this setting and while being guarded by Aaron Gordon. So I would enter game five and thinking of what are other ways that we can run actions that script cleaner offense for players other than Ant. And I think there's there's things to find there with Rudy. We found, you know, can we get Jaden back on the offensive glass doing doing some of those sort of things can use him as a cutter more. I, I don't have my head firmly wrapped around what those things need to be, but I'm pretty sure I've said it after every single game in this. I'm just floored by how wide open Rudy Gobert is uh, on the roll, and it's kind of crazy to me that, I mean, game one, six points, three of six shooting, no free throws. Game two, obviously, doesn't play. Game three, six points on three of five shooting, oh, zero, zero free throws. Um, game four, which is tonight, 11 points, three of five shooting. He did get to the line nine times or shot five of nine from the line. Like, I know people don't like what Rudy's offense looks like, but it is a part of the Wolves offense and was the entirety of the season. And that has completely stopped in this series. So if I'm looking for more offense, that's, that is, that is probably the first button I'm, I'm trying to hit more of empty corner, get that little two, two man mic game going. I mean, th th there's things there. And it's worth mentioning because I would imagine that people listening to this think this is one of our worst takes. He did have five turnovers. Like mm, when he gets point. the ball, he ne also needs to be better with it. <laughs> right. Yep. Uh, and I think at least one of those was someone just like dumped it to him. And all of a sudden it's just him versus Jokic in a back down. It's like, you can't have that. But when the rest of your four other starters combine for five turnovers and you have five itself, like, and again, mm -hmm. I thought Rudy answered that question really well. It wasn't him being like a year ago and he's like, I should have more of the ball. Like that's not yeah. the angle that he took, but he probably does need to touch the ball more. Just like you said, not only because his effective field goal percentage was something that just buoyed this team on nights when they didn't bring a lot of energy or have a lot of offense, right. but it also leads to, like you said, you know, or the, what I say, like the Draymond Green kind of kickouts to these wide open threes, because all of a sudden, if you get it to him, it's like a four on three, you have this advantage. So that's got to be something in terms of just looking at up and down the box score, where else could they get offense from? You would imagine that Carl has a bounce back game on Tuesday where he talked about that offensively. I thought Nas was a little better tonight. I don't know if you can remember this in your brain, but defensively, I thought they cooked him. <laughs> yeah, it was. And I think like they attacked not him. not like the game pick, two. Yeah. You know, in the pick and roll. So I don't, I mean, Nas has shown you an ability to be that microwave scorer off the bench, but. Man, how great did he start? Yeah. That very first, uh -huh. his defense looked great. That first possession on Jokic. Yep. They get a stop. It was like a terrible Denver possession. They go down the other way. 
Nas catches it, it's out of his hands in a third of a second, made three. Um, I mean, he's he's got to be part of the answer of, of getting more offense. But it's a, it's a good point. to. I, I think there's a ton of people who are listening to this right now or after the game and are like, you need more offense. Well, Nas Reed only played 19 minutes. Um, go watch. I, I, yeah. I am not the smartest person on this pod ever, but go watch his like defensive coverages. I, I really think Malone and Denver were trying to go at him. And that's probably why he could only play 19 minutes. But, but to my other, my main was point, a, was a bad body language on the bench game from Nas too. Yeah. And my biggest takeaway from this is I, I'm having fun and this has been the most fun season for me ever. But I yeah, don't this. care what you did yesterday. Like yesterday's price is not today's price. So if you just if you get a stinker out of Carl again in those first six seven minutes, and he's just still in his head and he's doing some of the straight voltage stuff, then I'm just gonna go down with the Nas Reed ship, right? Like because at least you know that the offense is gonna be there, and you're just gonna have to yeah. give up something now. So uh, I mean that's what Denver did tonight too. I'm probably the best way to segue into this. Well, is- I, I, sorry, just very last thing yeah. on that, like. Part of the question, if, if the if the answer to needing more offense is Nas, then that will come at the cost of minutes for Rudy Gobert or Carl Anthony Towns. And I think that's part of the difficult questions that Chris Finch and the staff need to get into in advance of game five is, okay, if we want to lean further into Nas Reed, whose minutes is that, you know, coming and does out? It ha- and just, I'm asking you seriously, does it have to? Like it can't be a three big thing, and they did. And, That's a good point. They went to the the three big thing. To the, the all three played together tonight, um, in the second quarter. Once Mike Conley picked up his third foul, which they did one of my favorite subs ever, which is like one of the centers in for Mike Conley. So, <laughs> yep, that's I, I, weird and works on this team. But they they did go to that. You know, you're right. That that could be that could be part of the answer. Um, I know they don't have a lot of faith in that lineup being able to defend i mean they, they didn't all year they played zone in that the whole time so i think that's the bigger but that's what's going to make bugaboo this, with that i know i bleeped off chess earlier but that's what's going to make this like real chess now is you got those first two and you lose these next two but adjustments i mean these this is real adjustments like what are you now willing to be like hey at this point two two three game series coming up we're just going to give that up like i would right. reference that goat path and 300 you just have to have a goat path and just hope that Denver doesn't find it. And and we're not smart enough to know what the the right adjustments exactly are. My question more so is how aggressive do you want to get with the adjustments? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to make real shifts in who is playing and when is playing from a rotation standpoint? Do you want to let go of the cat on Jokic? matchup and go to to go bear on yoke you know there there are some more bold there's yeah, a, oh, there's bolder mean, yeah. adjustments and then there's just like some smaller things does that make sense yeah like, like oh I, my I, god I, is that jalen clark's music like yeah <laughs> yeah no i and, and but you know i in the d- d- coaching staff's defense you you don't make bold adjustments when you're up 2-0 and you sure. probably don't make bold adjustments when you're up 2-1 at home but now that you're at two two, going back to Denver, I maybe ex- and maybe not, and maybe not. I'm I'm not like, and maybe that's not. I think the, it the would right be. Answer. I again, it seems like we're shitting on this guy, and he's been such a part of this culture change stuff. But you can't watch what you've watched enough, not just in these games, but and think that Kyle Anderson can play in Game Five. I, that sounds terrible, but like he just, he, I don't know how he can get any minutes because I don't know. Not only what is he going to do on the court, but then as to we just said. He's taking minutes away from someone else who's going to give them a better chance. Even Rudy, right? Rudy, Carl, if, if, and Nas. If they're going to play him, just play with the good players. <laughs> like, or the better players. All right, one, two, three, break. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, uh, so you wanted, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ant, and, and what was your well, last no, no, thing? Just, I think we should just like look ahead to game yep. five and kind of recap. It's late here on uh, Monday mm-hmm. morning. But uh, Anthony Edwards had 44 points tonight, 16 of 25. Five for eight from three, got to the line eight times, which is eight more times in game three. Five rebounds, five assists, three turnovers, a couple steals and a block. Uh, kind of did it again, right? Like he was that game one supernova, uh, but he just didn't have anyone else to join him at the party. And I think it did exhaust him. I mean, he was really cooking in that second half, but it was like the 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 happy or the pros and the cons. Like you saw it again. He's made a leap. He's 22. 
and he can just go shot for shot with the best of the best. Just like you in college. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this is this was the game. Uh, it's I don't know. Like I, my adjustment into game five would obviously just be hey, Ant score forty four again. But he just probably now has to play a Tom Thibodeau level amount of minutes for now. And if and if you give up something, you give up something. But the scariest thing to me, and I know we're talking about Ant, was a couple games at home where you've thrived. Nikhil has just not been Nikhil. And Nikhil was always like a nice safety net to come in for Ant when Ant sat in my mind. Like just, you know, he plays defense, he can make some plays, but he also could hit some big shots. If they're not going to have enough guys to score, man, I don't know how you take Ant off the floor. What? And and again, and I just, I haven't watched this back, but let's text about this tomorrow. When you are rewatching the game, like second quarter, third quarter, middle of the game, tell me what you think about Ant, what Ant, just watch Ant defensively. Okay. I and and, and I don't I Ant had a Ant had a terrific game. I just think playing 45 minutes and scoring 44 points wrecked his defense in in this game from a from a precision element of it. And so like and and I don't know. Like I'd still take that game from Ant, but the question becomes okay, if you get it down to 40, do you does he stop resting on defense? And what is the opportunity cost of that? I haven't rewatched it. I, I don't know. So I'll, no, I, I'll see I how will. I feel about it. But in the moment, I was noticing that a lot. I'm going to hammer this home all week. This is all different now. This is one game sample size championship type stuff. Like what your adjustment is for game five needs to, in my mind, disregard everything you've done in the first now 90 games of the season. And the one that stood out to me, your whole first segment on Jokic minutes when he's off the court is like so smart. Ant played 45 minutes and 20 seconds tonight. They won those minutes by five points. Yeah. He sat two minutes and 40 seconds. They lost those minutes by 13 points. Yeah. So I want to watch. So no, maybe, yeah, maybe you just start. No. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you're just raising just his ass on defense. They still won those 45 minutes by five. And in a game that is becoming very, 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 emphasize on the math part and these Jokic non minutes, you know, maybe you just don't have any non ant minutes, you know, like that's, that's your safety net. And maybe that won't happen in game five. I'd be shocked, honestly, if he plays 45 minutes in game five, even though I'm harping on it. But if you lose that game and you're down to game six, man, you go out. I know you hate this, but January ant, you got to go out with the bullets in the chamber or firing the bullets in the chamber. I don't want to lose a series it, because I had ant on the bench. We, we, we should say that, what we talked about a lot was Ant was saying after game three that he needed to be more aggressive, mm-hmm. which has historically been a cautionary tale yep, of for sure. when Ant says I need to be more aggressive in the locker room. It's normally a very inefficient shooting game. The The next game, I don't know exactly what he shot, but I'm pretty sure it was efficient if he had 44. Um, yeah, he was 11 of 16, 17 yeah. from two, five of eight. Uh, from three so major major credit to him for all playoffs for finding the times in which to be more aggressive while also being the playmaker getting off the ball during double teams I mean he is absolutely absolutely nailing that and I'm sorry I kind of feel like I started with a a nitpick on the defensive stuff but that when I saw 45 minutes or it was like I don't know. There's like one point where there's a ton of the game left and he was at like 37. And I'm like, okay, wow, this is gonna, this is gonna be a, a high total. And that that's when I was kind of noticing some of the, the defensive stuff. So I just, I, I don't know what the risk reward is there. Do you know what it made me think of watching it? Do you remember Devin Booker in that series against the Nuggets last year? When Devin Booker was just like 40 a game and super yeah. efficient mm-hmm. and it wasn't enough. Yeah. That's at least how I want to go down swinging. If yeah. this series has shifted in a way that, and I don't believe that. Like I, I, and the vibe I think was a lot of right. We like to talk about this post game coaches, whatever frustration that you just dropped both at home, mm-hmm. but also there. Nas is always sums it up best. But there wasn't like a feeling of defeat. There was a feeling of our lives are going to be. What did I say a couple nights ago? They didn't do any of the to dos on Saturday, so Sunday they had to do all their their chores. They didn't mm-hmm. do chores all weekend. So Monday's going to suck, but it's not over by any means. But again, if you're going to go out 
on the, uh, this upcoming week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, or whatever, Saturday, and try to play as many minutes as possible and give them, at least give them that Devin Booker role and then see if you can find enough mm-hmm. KD points or other people to come to the yeah. party to try to outscore them. Because you're right. The biggest takeaway from tonight and this weekend is that the offense yeah. needs to come to the party because the defense is still really good, but you're getting there's going to be nice. But there's, there's reason to believe the that like the the Denver offense is going to like kind of come down, right? Like sure, even if Jokic and Murray duplicate what they did, like are you going to also get eleven of? You're not going to get eleven of twelve from Gordon and six of nine from three point shooting from the the Nuggets bench. So it's like. Yeah, the defense, the defense is is okay. I mean, they had an and Denver's an incredible shooting team, but they shot the ball at an incredible seven percent. Yeah, like that's gonna that that probably will come down more. And if you have a <laughs> like the Wolves need to go on like a defensive run too at some point that kind of yeah. messes with it. But yeah, the the more like controllable variable if you're the Wolves has been the variable that has been volatile all season. This offense, what are you gonna get out of this? this this Timberwolves offense that has been definitively mediocre or mm-hmm. was definitively mediocre the entirety of of the regular season and wasn't until these these last two games in the playoffs playoff offense has been significantly better got to find things and and to me the way is a couple more small things a couple more in effective ways of the others getting mm-hmm. involved uh, offensively there that's all i got man you got anything else yeah, let's just go two minutes. It's late. Okay. It's we're an hour in. I'm I'm hoping people are still listening, but uh, I just kind of want to recap the weekend, in, sure. in 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 a sense of. It was the apex of my sports fandom after that series sweep in Phoenix, and then they come out and they just do the unthinkable, right? In 72 hours in Denver to steal it 2-0. and then this whole weekend we have events and the Wolves come back and then they drop these two, and then tonight you've been working, but like just segments of like the timeline, right? Like segments of people are just once again done with it and i what's cool for me being on the ground for this and being in the locker room is that's not what i think is going on in that locker room i i i think they again they didn't do any work this weekend and their whole work week's gonna be a lot harder but every player said the same thing that none of us thought this was going to be a short series you know what i mean and i just think that's a good mentality to have. I mean, Ant was his usual self post game. He was like, I don't think they got any momentum. Like we dropped a couple, they dropped a couple. We've won there before. He just has a different mentality. And for me, that's what's made this. And you and I have talked to my social battery. So low, we talked to so many people this weekend that had so many cool stories at our live events, people that flew in from London, people that drove up from North Carolina. Uh, I, I hold firm to my belief that this team is different. And the result of this series might be the same as it's been every year. The Wolves don't win a title. But I, I don't think that this is the end of them after tonight. Do you? Uh, no, the, the end of them? I mean, there was just... I, there was yeah, one I've, I've been I, staying off of... I know, but there was one tweet that was like, I don't know, for something about like, for everyone that made fun of the older generation for bringing up Minnesota sports history, I hope you learned your lesson. Like, get the fuck out of here. This has been so much fun. Do you think the guys? Why don't just don't no, even no, no. look at what they? Why do you care what they're saying? Yeah, listen, you get to call out media people. I get to. Do you think the people that got to sit courtside the night that for the last seventy-two hours have been given Nas Reed tattoos and Mike Conley landed in their lap care about Minnesota sports history? They had the best time of their lives. Like this, this is what it's all about. I'm not looking for prostitution and easy things. Like I want to find true love, and this team has been <laughs> true love. Like this has been. This is how you get your heart broken in a real way. And they did. They kind of shit the bed. They did nothing over the weekend. They enjoyed their own scent for a whole week. I mean, Finch said that pregame. Ant said that postgame. We didn't like the days off. And it kind of got to them. And now they've been put back on the ropes by the defending champs. But I I don't know about you. This was the most fun basketball podcast I've ever done because all we did was talk adjustments and these little things and nitpicks. This game came down to like five plays. (laughs) And that's awesome. This is not wolves hornets in february this was like real high level chess and if you make a misstep like the wolves did in that second quarter or either with the rotation they put in that's never played or not you know throwing touchdown passes to jamal murray i love that man if you don't love mm-hmm. this about professional basketball and, and covering this timberwolves team or following this timberwolves team this year i it's not for you 
So this was a fun weekend for me, and I just want to thank everyone that came out the last couple of nights for our shows too because it was a right. – I will leave this weekend being like that was awesome. Just the results weren't there, but best of three moving forward. Yeah, yeah, and more more, more basketball to come. And I know that – I'm sure that there is a huge emotional investment from the fan base, and I don't – you know, I, I don't mean to, to take away from that. I just know that – if and when I check my Twitter mentions, that's <laughs> normally the place that people go to vent. And I get that. Yeah. I don't need to. Uh, you can consume it if you want. I'm going to choose to not well, take, work in take progress. Um, and that and that's and that's fine. There is there's more stuff to there's more stuff to come and there's more. Aren't you excited, though, for game five? Like, you know what I mean? Like, now you get to see. Oh, man, I'm a, I, what, what I, they was, I was excited for the Hornets game. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we got to talk about you need help, too. But uh, I, I'm excited to see Nikola Jokic said <laughs> that Tuesday game five is the biggest game of their lives. That's he cool. said that. Yeah, he said that mm -hmm. post game. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if Minnesota, who def definitely came out tonight with better energy, they just couldn't. Again, they slipped up in minor spots. This was not the performance they had on on Friday night. But if if Tuesday is the biggest game of Nikola Jokic's life, and he's playing against the team that I root for and cover, I'll be there. Even if it's a 9.30 tip in the central time zone. Biggest game. <laughs> it would be a very big game for the very big game for the Timberwolves. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, this was fun, Kyle. Thank you for everything. Uh, th this weekend uh, could not have done all of the, the live pods and these pods by myself. I would have i almost still did die um th but this was this was a this was a, a great weekend and really fun to to connect with people obviously not not the results that the fan base wanted but yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens here going forward um the denver nuggets are back right they mm -hmm. weren't really there in in games one and two but i kind of go back to what i was thinking about at the beginning of the series i gave the wolves a shot against the denver nuggets like that they just would need to execute. And I think what happened winning two games was a little bit of the meticulous stuff. They just slipped, yep. you know, and not the right team to do this against. Um, you'll lose. They will lose if, if there's things like the end of the end of the first half or the stray voltage or, you know, not playing that lineup in the non yoke I mean, there's just, it, it, it's got to, the margin for error is small against Denver. That that's the way to put it. And the Wolves had a lot of a lot of error in this game. But I will say throughout the game, it was like mysteriously close. Mm -hmm. I like you know, and and that's a credit to them that there was a resiliency to them. So that's that, and the idea that the we have seen them play better, and that some of the adjustments seem more like effort and focus. I I I don't think they're dead. In, in in this series but they're going to need to play different and as always think more this is a thinking basketball series and and we saw them do that in in games one and two in denver so we'll see what ends up best, happening uh, there too best road record in the west all season yes you know i mean and, and finch said a pregame mm -hmm. like i think he would rather have his team on the road i he said that so many times this year that i just there's just a lot of more distractions at home yeah that's that is the it's just life you know i mean same same for me you know like really you know it's like oh mother's day you know yeah. got a twins game or timberwolves game you know like uh it's yeah so we'll we'll, we'll see five. we'll see what happens at Tuesday. game five he's kyle taggy i follow him on twitter at kyle taggy i'm dana at Tamor mba um i'm heading to denver for for game five I don't really know what my plan is yet for this week. So we're going to figure that out. I mean, we will definitely do do one uh, after that game, but we'll, we'll keep rolling uh, with this series and, and, and see where it takes us. Um, so yeah, until after game five, he's Kyle. I'm Dane. Peace out. How I'm feeling, man, I hope it never stops, yeah. Green and hot so you can find me in the crowd, yeah, yeah.